Hey everybody, what's up? Fred here from PLCGurus.net. So you're following along in our C Sharp HMI video series, and if you've watched the previous videos, you know that we've walked you through to this point how to get Visual Studio up and running, how to download and install the in-gear uh, NetLogix driver specifically that we're going to be working with because I'm working with the ControlLogix uh, PLC here in the lab. Get those drivers set up on your PC. And in the last video, we looked at some of the demo projects that provide you some samples of how to get up and running and connected and reading and writing tags from a PLC very, very quickly. Now, granted, we did glaze over the uh, code behind and what was actually happened behind the scenes uh, on how we actually connect it and communicate to a, a controller via our C-sharp application. So what I wanna do in this video is I wanna go ahead and create a very, very simple HMI application that maybe throws a couple twists in. So I'm gonna, we're gonna go ahead and add a, a connect disconnect button and then maybe we're gonna add a field that we can continuously read the value of a tag at some sample rate that we define. So a very common use for HMIs. I mean, we, we typically wanna read values continuously from our controller. And I'm gonna show you how we can do that in your C-sharp application and set the sample rates on, on how often you wanna pull that take, etc. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. Let's get going. Okay, so you see I have Visual Studio open up, opened up here. Uh, so what you'll want to do is go to create new project and you're going to want to choose, we're going to go ahead and create a WinForms uh, application here. It's a little bit simpler to do. And so let's go ahead and do that. We'll call this test project and we want to create a directory. Yes, we're not going to bother with source control for this and we'll click OK. So that's going to go ahead and set up our solution so that we can actually start generating a project here. Okay, so before we do anything, I think it's important that I show you the references and how to actually add the APIs or the driver or the class libraries that you've purchased or at least demoing from Ingear itself, okay? So what you'll wanna do is you'll wanna go over to the reference sections. I'm gonna right click on there and add a reference. And I'm gonna to go to the extensions, on, under, extensions under the assemblies here. So there are a few different DLL files that you want to select here. So deploy LX, this is the actually the DLL that allows you to deploy your C Sharp applications to the field, okay? And we'll get into a video that explains how we can do that. Um, you'll notice I do have the AB link uh, driver here. We don't need that one for this one because we're connecting to a control logics, but we do want to select the Logix.5.0 here, the NetLogix 5.0. If it's 7.0 on your machine, that's fine. I'm running with a slightly older um, set of drivers from InGear, but no, no issue. It should look at and, and do exactly the same thing. It's really the newer versions of InGear gives you additional support for newer hardware. That's all it is. And you want to make sure you select the InGear.net interfaces 3.0 uh, reference as well and we're going to click OK and that's going to go ahead and add those references to our solution for us. So, so now that we've done that we can basically access all of the different classes and methods in there that handle all the low-level driver communication type stuff that we don't want to concern ourselves with. I mean, we want to solve a specific problem. We want to be focused on the application that we're trying to solve, not the low-level TCP IP uh, protocols, all that all that stuff InGear has created for us. So this is going to be great. You're going to be blown away by how easy this is. Okay, so I have, you can see I have my uh, default form. So I'm just going to collapse that. You can see we have our standard uh, form template here. You know, we're not going to need all that. I'm just going to go ahead and maybe make that a little bit smaller. And let's go to our toolbox here. If your toolbox isn't showing, uh, you'll want to go to your toolbox and maybe just pin that up because we're going to be making use of it right now. And I'm going to go ahead and dra drag and drop a button out here. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger. I don't know, something like that. And 
on the button the text let's go ahead and make this our connect button so again make sure your properties panel is open I mean I generally keep my solution Explorer open and my properties panel open on this side um, I can't again this is personal preference and let's go ahead and name that uh, button we'll call it BTN button connect okay so I mean we can drag it around we can size it how we want um, I don't know that looks pretty good to me like I say this is gonna be a very simple straightforward application that just is gonna provide some proof of concept for us moving forward so I'm gonna go ahead and control C control V that to copy it and now you notice we have automatic snapping and alignment going on which is really great um, again let's go ahead and call that button we'll call this one the disconnect button and I'm gonna scroll down here we want to modify that button text and we'll call that disconnect and there we go okay so now so we've got the disconnect we've got the uh, the connect and disconnect buttons we haven't coded anything yet we're just building out our uh, front-end GUI here uh, so let's go ahead now and add a text box area that's going to provide us uh, a way to display our tag value that we're going to eventually be reading from the PLC so let's go ahead and choose the we're after the rich text box here and again there it is so you want to drag that out and I'm just gonna go ahead and size that window and I don't know we'll just place it I don't know that looks pretty good for now anyhow and let's go and edit some of the properties of this so let's call it I don't know tag value window give it some more meaningful name here and let's see here what else do we want to do um, we want to make it read only yes because we're just gonna be reading from the PLC for that that's fine and you know what maybe to initialize the text in there we'll throw a few question marks How's that? If we haven't read anything, oh, let's make that font bigger. Let's do that for sure. So let's go up to the font and we're gonna drop that down. And I don't know, let's make the size, let's go 50. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that looks better. Something we can read anyway, right? We wanna be able to see it. Okay, so we'll put that there. And maybe we wanna have a couple status uh, labels on here just to to give us some information on whether we're connected or you know the timestamp of the of the tag read so let's go ahead and drop a couple labels here so I'm gonna call this one um, let's just label it connection status okay and you know what let's actually you know what let's bold that why not let's go up to font again and we'll make that bold okay and let's copy that now and we'll call this one hmm let's let's maybe grab the timestamp that's always useful especially if you're logging to a database if you have a database back end of some sort and you want to be time stamping these these tag reads uh, it's a good idea to be able to capture the uh, the timestamp of one when, when the tag was actually read so that seems like a logical one to me and let's go ahead and align that and now let's drop another label on and this one is going to be the one we're actually going to update or dynamically when the application is running. So we'll call this label uh, status and let's grab another label and we'll call this label label timestamp. And maybe we can initialize these so they're not just showing those out of the gate. So maybe initially we'll say not a, not available and a and connection status on startup it probably is going to make sense that we can show disconnected why not and again this application is by no means going to be production ready so please do not just take what I'm doing here and put it in your production environment there are many many things that can happen and can go wrong that are going to be able to break what we're doing here like I said this is mainly for proof of concept and that's about it okay so I think we're done with the GUI this is all we're gonna do let's uh, let's go ahead and get to the code behind now so there's a couple of ways you can actually access the C sharp code that's uh, that's running behind the scenes on this Windows form uh, if you right click anywhere in the designer surface you can go view code and it will take you to the code okay so I'm just gonna close that again well the other way you can do it is if you're gonna be implementing a specific object like a button object 
Um, you can just double click that object. And what it does is it automatically generates the method by which you can start to implement your C-sharp code in. So if I go back here and do the same on the disconnect, you can see now I have two methods created, a, a connect method and a disconnect method that we're gonna go ahead and use. But before we do that, we have to tell the uh, this class that we're gonna be using the logics namespace. So this is the namespace for the in-gear logics drivers that we're going to be making use of so that we can actually call the methods in those class libraries okay all right so i hope that's clear so i'm going to go ahead and create my controller now whoops private controller and i'm just going to call it my plc and let's go ahead and initialize that so i'm going to go new controller and I hit bracket. So you notice now, I'm just gonna scroll through these overloads. So notice there are seven overloads for this constructor. So I'm just gonna go ahead, so you can define a CPU type, IP address, uh, CPU type, IP address. So I do encourage that you scroll through these different overloads just so you can see what you have accessible to you. Um, so I'm gonna be using one of them in particular. So let's go ahead and tell it that we are using a controller dot CPU dot and notice those are um, this is all strongly typed which is nice and let's go ahead and give it the IP address now remember from the first uh, video we said the PLC is going to be residing at the IP address 172.16.10.10 and let's make sure we terminate that with a semicolon uh, for proper syntax and the next thing now I'm going to create is my tag that we're going to set up to read and we'll just call it my tag we're not getting fancy here uh, so we'll say it's a new tag and bracket and notice there are 17 overloads for this tag function here so there are many many different overloads depending on what type of tag uh, that you're going to be using whether you're using arrays and, and all of these things and we'll get into some of these as we move through the series i'm sure but for now we're going to do a simple read and I'm just gonna give it the tag name. It's gonna be a tag reel. And that's it. And it should know the date, oops, wrong spot. And it should know what it's reading once we go ahead and perform that read. So I think that's enough for what I wanna do here. So now I wanna go ahead and jump down to the connect and disconnect logic here. And let's go ahead and add the logic for my PLC dot. Now notice all of the methods because we're, we're using the variable now that it hasn't been instantiated with a controller object. So this essentially now is a controller that I'm using here. And here are all of the different properties and methods that you will have access to in the in-gear library for the controller um, for a control logics processor, okay? So we are interested here in the connect method, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Notice it's just a void method. And that's it. That's all we have to do to call or make a connection to a control logics processor. That's it. I mean, all of the low level details have been stripped away from us. Isn't this fantastic? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the disconnect uh, method here and, and code some logic in for our disconnect button. So I'm gonna say if my PLC dot, now notice I'm going to go ahead and use one of their properties and I wanna use the is connected property. So notice this is a Boolean type, so it'll return true if the, if the PLC is in fact connected. So I'm checking, I'm just doing a check here. If it's connected, then I wanna go ahead and disconnect. If it's not connected, then I don't wanna call the disconnect. This is just good programming practice, really. So my PLC, and I'm just tabbing to do the shortcut key there, and I wanna call the disconnect method. And that's it, for now, anyhow. And you know what, maybe, what we'll do is we'll do some stuff with the button uh, illuminations here. So the connect disconnect so that if we're connected, you know, the, the connect gets grayed out. If we're disconnected or if we're disconnected, the connect is, is active and this one's grayed out. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and add that logic right now. 
So just a couple of spaces, button, connect. We'll say enabled. We're gonna access the enable property. We're gonna say, so we're gonna make that active when we've disconnected, okay? And the button disconnect dot enable property, we're gonna make false. We don't wanna be disconnecting or letting the user disconnect the button when we're not actually connected to the PLC. So that means logically, we're gonna to have to jump back up here now and add some button logic as well, aren't we? So we'll say button uh, connect uh, dot enabled, and we're gonna say false now after we've made our connection. And we may tidy this up as we start building this little application. Button disconnect dot enabled equals true. And maybe even in the, uh, the, the the main constructor here, I'm just gonna copy and paste this code. Um, actually, we want this code. We should do it right up there. So as soon as we initialize the components, we wanna go ahead and set up those buttons. Okay, you know what? I think that's all we're gonna do for here right now. Let's go ahead and just test it. So we have it, we should have some functions. I got my PLC on, uh, it's turned on, it's ready to go, I'm connected. My IP address on my computer, you can see I'm communicating here. I've got RS links going. You can see I'm, I'm able to, to browse that backplane. So everything is set up here. Why don't we go ahead and, and try something? Let's just try it. So I'm just gonna hit the run button there. And let's see what we get. Okay, so notice the disconnect is grayed out. The only option I have is to connect. And we haven't updated the status or anything yet, but notice as I'm doing that, we are getting the proper action on the connect disconnect buttons that we're seeing. So you know what, let's stop that because that's good. But let's go ahead and update the connection status based on whether we are actually connected or not. So let's go ahead and put that code in just to see what happens. So to do that, all we have to do is populate the text field of that label. So in my connect uh, method here, I'm gonna go label. Remember we called that status dot text. And we're gonna say it equals connected. Right? If we've connected, we're gonna say it's connected and that'll be good. Again, we're gonna clean some of this stuff up as we go, because this doesn't really tell us that we're connected. We're just updating the label that we're assuming it's connected or not connected, okay? <laughs> Disconnected, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and try that now and see if we at least get some updating on the label, the status here. So right now we're disconnected. Connected, disconnected, connected. And again, I mean, we're, we're hard coding this. This isn't actually updating based on the status of the connection, but we're gonna go ahead and fix that. But I think we're getting a little bit too long in this video. So I think we're gonna cap it off there and make this, this little HMI project a couple of parts. So I hope you found this video informative. Please, if you haven't already done so, consider subscribing to our channel and make sure you give us a like and make sure you ring that bell so you know when a new video is up. And also head on over to our companion website at https colon backslash backslash plcgurus.net and become a member of what is quickly becoming the largest and fastest growing community of professional engineers, technicians, and technologists who all share a passion for industrial automation and control systems. So come on over there. Registration is free. Subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.